It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our honorable chief guest of the convocation, Sri Tapan Misra, who holds an honorary DSC. He is the founding director of Shishi Radar, former director, Space Application Center and Physical Research Laboratory, ISRO. He is a fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering, corresponding member of IAA, fellow IETE, and fellow of the Indian Society of Remote Sensing. He has been a senior advisor to the chairman ISRO. He is an adjunct professor of IIT Jodhpur and was an adjunct professor with IIT Kharagpur. He is a past president of ISG and ISRS. Now, I request our chief guest to kindly deliver the convocation speech, share thoughts with the august audience, and bless our graduating students. Honorable Chief Guest, sir. Chairman and members of Board of Governors, Senate members, directors of the Indian Institute of Information Technology, Kalyani, faculty and staff members of the institute and the bright and young students of the institutes who are graduating today and ladies and gentlemen very good morning to all on this auspicious day my dear young friends you are standing on the threshold of your bright future which is going to span over a few decades ahead i know today is a day of mixed emotions a fantastic a fantastic feeling of announcing to the world that you have arrived and a bit of apprehension on what the future holds for you. You are going to witness and experience tremendous changes in society, technology, lifestyle and global politics which I dare not hazard a guess today. I am sure all of you have planned your future course. Some may be already on the course and some may be just in the preparation. Whatever course you may embark upon, you may be naturally expectant of success in your chosen path. Success means many different things to different people. But after four decades of working experience, I feel success is when you feel that you still command respect from people when you retire from a position of power and influence and you are in no position to benefit them in any way. Success means to me at the end of the day when you feel inner satisfaction that you have contributed your might in building your nation and bringing smiles to the people who are not as fortunate as you are. In my humble opinion, you have two options for choosing your career before you. Either you choose a path well trodden for long and by many, or you decide to travel through a path uncharted till now. The first choice will bestow you with a well-paid job and a comfortable and predictable lifestyle. The second choice is risky. You will have to build a path where there was none before. Building your own trajectory is arduous and needs gumption on your part. But if you build your own path, you will learn to create your own future, your own destiny. You will realize that the best way to predict your future is to build it. The reward you get is incomparable. Great careers are built this way. When you rejoice at coming through a great stride in your journey through academics, you are going to start another important journey of your life. So choose your path carefully. God bless you for whatever path you choose. Let me share my personal experience of building my career, though, though small one in ISRO. I remember when I passed out in 1984 from Jadapur University, I had four options, you know. There were three jobs, two of them were well-paying and one of the, one is a, was the very small salary in ISRO. 
and also a place in school of automation in IIC. In those days, computer science was not there. It was just introduced first time in IIT, and that they are going to be graduating the next year. And the intelligent choice was to join IIC as passing out with a master's degree from the best MTech program in the country. In those days, would have ensured a get pass to some prestigious university in America and a great future in American industry. And I went to buy a ticket at the railway counter, and I do not know why, but I purchased a ticket to Ahmedabad in place of Bangalore. I landed up in Space Application Center in Ahmedabad. And you'll be surprised, I was the only non-IIT B.Tech recruited in SAC that year. And you know, in those days, ISRO was quite snooty. Their preference was IIT M.Tech, PhD, or IIT B.Tech. And all smarter fellows were absorbed in prestigious IRS and insert programs which were flushed with funds and boasted huge labs with all the top-notch equipment. I was the only leftover, and in fact, I had to wait for a month to get a position somewhere where to be posting is to be there. And after a month, I was put in a new activity called Micro Remote Sensing Program. Hardly any funding or facility, not even a proper sitting place or a lab. The team had certain senior people were odd outliers of SAC. Under the guidance of a great human being, Sri N.S. Pillay, the team was repairing a defunct radar donated by Indian Navy to build ISRO's first imaging radar. Everybody told that there was no future. Our team built the first imaging radar flying on a second World War vintage Dakota DC-10 aircraft, and everybody used to laugh at us. For the poor resolution of 250 meters from 3 kilometer height over a very poor swath of 5 kilometers. And in fact, ISRO had already one year before launched the first IRS-1 satellite, and it was giving fantastic color images at 23 meter resolution from 840 kilometer altitude, and ours was no comparison at all. Undaunted by the indifference, from there, we moved in long strides. We built world's fifth airborne synthetic aperture radar and spaceborne research SAR, which was a global trendsetter. In fact, research SAR is the first payload, which had many firsts, and globally we became the de facto standard for all the spaceborne SARs built after research one. I must mention to you, like in all research labs and academic institutions, and ISRO was also thus following the same philosophy. We have to repeat what somebody else has done in other country. And we were the, probably the first people what we did is the first time in the world. And ISRO's fame zoomed internationally, and the satellite brought a great benefit to crop estimation, flood mapping, saved many lives, contributed greatly to Indian economy, and most importantly, he helped many important military missions and advanced planning by imaging at a high resolution of better than one meter through clouds, fogs, rains, and at any time of the day or the year. My greatest pride is not that I held important and coveted positions, but that I played a role in ISRO to build a very avant-garde remote sensing technology available to only a select few globally and used to cost a fortune in the global market. We built the technology cheap, almost one-tenth of the international pricing, which helped our country to chart many new paths. My career was built with radar technology. And in fact, I must tell you, the subject I dreaded the most in my college days. When I look back to my career, I probably did not miss the God sent opportunity which came in the camouflage of the possibility of sure case of bad career choice. Please remember, opportunity stares at you when you are faced with making a difficult choice. You are going to be future leaders of our country, our institutions, and our industries. From my experience, I have observed 
that great leaders have three qualities, connection with society, customers, or end users. Second, experience in running an administration with an ability to take very mature decisions. You know, many people want to take a fast decision. Somebody takes slow decisions. But I feel that the decisions what to take in a very mature manner is the most important. And a vision which goes beyond profits and losses and positions and remunerations. All successes will not be the same. Some will get public prominence and sometimes unduly. And you must remember that the most fairest part of life is that the life is never fair. You will find some will try to take undue credit. Many of you will remain incognito, but become the backbone of any institutions or a project or an endeavor. I have faced this same predicament many times in my professional life. Sometimes I used to feel frustrated, but I always bounced back remembering what our former Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, famously observed. There are two kinds of people, those who do the work and those who take the credit. Try to be in the first group. There is less competition there. Finally, your work, your contribution speak for you. God has bestowed us with a very simple life. We make it complicated by overthinking. Geniuses are those who can explain in simple words and find out the simplest way of expressing the most complex of the subjects. I get inspiration from the simple messages by Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa Dev. Ramakrishna Dev once met a Hatha Yogi in Varanasi. He demonstrated his Siddhi to Ramakrishna Dev by walking across the mighty Ganga and coming back, all by walking on water. Ramakrishna Dev was very appreciative of the yogi's Siddhi. He asked him, how many years did you do your sadhana to achieve this Siddhi? The yogi replied, 12 years. Ramakrishna Dev inquired, how much does it cost to cross the river and come back by boat? Yogi replied, two anas. One ana is to be six paise those days. Ramakrishna Dev, in his usual simplicity, observed, in 12 years of sadhana, you achieved a siddhi worth only two anas? A profound lesson to all of us. When I think of Newton's laws of motion, Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, Kepler's loss of planetary motions or Einstein's famous equation of E equal to mc square, I am amazed that they describe the complex cosmic processes by very simple mathematical descriptions. This simple loss laid the foundation of industrial and technological revolutions which metamorphosed human civilization over a short period of two to three centuries beyond recognition. And the greatest lesson of your life, you achieve success when you learn to think simply, communicate simply, execute in simple manner, and be simple in your day-to-day -day dealing. But you know, thinking simple is never a simple thing. It takes great effort in, in unlearning to be simple. Please remember, today is just a step of education you have climbed. Education is given by your teachers, institutions, and your parents. And, but the learning is all by yourself. Learning is a lifelong companion, as observed by Albert Einstein. People, will, people and time will teach you what books cannot. So please remember, as you go in your life, Go on learning. The learning is a continuous process from everybody around you. I, I, I become emotional. I remember my late mother today, who went to leave my brother in I am Ahmedabad hostel. While coming back, she was coming down the famous Louis Kahn designed iconic harbor steps with an ecstatic face. 
tinged with a slight feeling of melancholy. While climbing down, she was muttering to herself. In her days, she never got a chance to cross the threshold of school education because of societal and family pressure in, in a far-flung village in Odisha. If she gets one more chance in her second month, she will surely try to study in some topmost institutions like I am Ahmedabad. I have great appreciation for the parents of the graduating students who have made umpteen sacrifices which they never made you realize and hid them behind their dried up tears to bring you up to this level. They achieved something through you which probably they could not get the opportunity to achieve. My salutes to your proud parents. Let me first thank the Indian Institute of Information Technology, Kalani, for giving me an opportunity to speak to the assembled bright minds who are going to build Bharat's future. Thank you all very much for your kind patience. Wish you, my young friends, great success in whichever endeavor you embark upon. God bless you all. Jai Hind.